All right, joining me now, Anthony Sampson from Jackson, Tennessee, Underdogs, a part of two of the biggest upsets in basketball history. Anthony, welcome to the show. Appreciate you for having me. Absolutely, man. So we're going to talk about all the Jackson, Tennessee underdog upsets. You know, how you guys are the first team to ever upset a one seed as a 16 seed. But before we get to that, you know, would love to hear how the team was created, who the team is made up of. You know, I know that it's two rival high schools, you know, joined together. Yeah, yeah. But if you could give the rundown, that would be fantastic. Yeah, yeah that's, that's part of the rundown. But I know, like, uh, of course, the, the guys that we started out with were Chris Cole, Jeremy Weldon, Mike Ward, them guys. Uh, you know, we were always playing little men's leagues and tournaments against them uh, when we first got out of college. And so um, we ended up playing in a tournament in Nashville for like, it was like five or 10,000 maybe, something like that. And um, we we ended up losing, but like, I think a couple of them was playing for another team and we was playing with our own team, we put, just slapped together. And so we ended up, <clears throat> we said we of course playing throughout the year. We're like, hey man, let's let's link up, go to Nashville, win the tournament down there. And uh we end up linking up down there and you know, we end up playing good down there. We don't we won it down there. And um, you know, pretty much the rest was history. We just we was looking for we was thirsty for basketball after that, because we just seen how we start clicking. So we were looking for any and whatever tournament to play in. That that's awesome. Um, you know, the story goes that you played a Kentucky alumni team who was the one seed in your first ever TBT game. They had a bunch of pro ballers. <clears throat> you guys were not pro ballers at the time. Can you talk a little bit about what the jobs and occupations were of, of your teammates? Man, we was truck drivers, delivery drivers, uh insurance agents bankers like we might have one pro player a guy that played pro maybe but uh and we we went out there and of course we we do it for the love of the game and it's like you know we went out there against them and we we just knew like it, it wasn't no doubt in our mind like we was finna win you know of course it's Kentucky and it's like yeah they could probably turn it up a notch and make us worry but like you know we it, they, they was nothing we never seen before because it wasn't like we was playing in a lot of low-level tournaments or anything like that. So when we seen them and, you know, they look at us and they just come out like, we Kentucky, we roll the balls out, they going to lay down. Like, no, nah, ain't, it ain't what that, that is. That's great. Um, so obviously you guys, you know, we say you're the first 16 seed to ever beat a one seed in, in organized, yeah. legit tournament basketball. When you hear that UMBC is the first team to do it, what do you think? I just chuckle a little bit. Like, I guess somebody ain't watching the TBT because we did it first. That's great. That's that's a great, great answer right there. Why do you think you guys are able to succeed? I mean, you yourself, you're you're five three, five four. You're an undersized, definitely undersized point guard. Why do you think you and your team? have time and time again been able to win games and upset higher seats. Well, well when you when you get enough guys that, that just want to win and uh they got IQ, you know, they don't really care about scoring or the numbers. Like if, if you really that good, that's gonna that's gonna come throughout the flow of the game. Somebody's gonna see what you can do, no matter if you have 10 or 25. But uh the main thing though is just going out there playing together and, and if you got enough guys with IQ, that's going – that's probably going to trump a team full of talent that's just out there playing for numbers any day of the week. De definitely. So, you guys played in that tournament. You won some games. You upset the one seed. You know, fast forward a few years, you guys made another run, you know, final 16, final eight, et cetera. Yeah. Fast forward another two years, all of a sudden you guys are a 15 seed again playing right. two seed House of Pain in basically a road game. I mean, what were you thinking when you saw again you were a 15 seed? I was 
I was thinking, because, you know, like, they had, you know, they had a couple big-name players, I, I remember, and uh, then it was at their place, and I just, I kind of felt like we was, you know, we might have been up against something a little different from usual, because, you know, they packed, you know, they brought a crowd, and then went, you know, when I got out, when I got out there, when the team got out there, it just, we weren't worried about it. It's just like we finna go out here and beat them. And which that they was a legit team, but you know, when them when that ball go up in the air, it ain't no it ain't no land down now. You in the fire, so you gotta fight now. So now TBT is eight regional locations, which means the one seed plays the eight seed. How do you feel that not only were you the first to do it? But it may never happen again with the format of TBT. Yeah. Um. Talking about with the uh the eight it, regions. Yeah, with the with the eight regions, you know, instead of four, there's no sixteen seed. There's only eight seeds. Yeah. yeah um. I don't, I don't know. You know, it's like we did it, and I feel like it might be the only time that it do happen, as far as. Like it's very rare because usually when they get yeah, when people usually pick a sixteen and then they have a one is it's usually gonna the one talent level is just gonna overwhelm what the sixteen brings and um and that's probably what where where it probably would be hard to ever happen again that's why you you rarely see it but an eight and a one you make it you make it sneak some in right there because you got. You know, you got teams that could easily be misplaced when you got eight teams right there like that. But I, I just it, – it, I don't see it pretty much happening as often. I mean, I can see it with the one and eights happening more often, a little more often, but not not as often. So. so you're still out there. You're still playing. We know that Jackson, Tennessee underdogs are not going anywhere. You know, you're we, we talked about you being undersized. You're undersized in every matchup you have. What – What's Anthony Sampson telling himself in the mirror before before a matchup with Kentucky <laughs> alumni, before a matchup yeah. with, you know, uh, Jacob Young, an Oregon, who just played in March Madness? Yeah. What are you telling yourself? Uh, a lot of times I don't, I don't think about it, but it's funny, like, when, when I'm kind of laughing with my teammates and stuff, they be like, you know, they when they do talk about my side, I'm like, really, I'm six feet. Because if I'm looking at a player and he's six feet, I'm thinking he's too small. <laughs> you know, because six feet, like, you about my size. I'm I'm uh, a little more athletic than people think. And um, and they're like, you six feet. It's like, yeah, you you too little, man. Like, <laughs> But, yeah, that, that's really my mindset. But other than that, like, my mindset is like, you come out here thinking it's sweet, like, <laughs> you're going to be in trouble. We, we put up a video of you basically saying, like, hey, this this smaller dude, he will still get buckets. He will still get rebounds. And the coolest thing about it was your son commented, that's my dad. How cool was that for you to see man, your son excited about that video? Man, out, of, out of everything that, uh, that come with it, like, that's probably the thing that, that touched me the most is my – you know, my son watching him play, uh, and he do – he do everything I do, but but better. Like he he can shoot, he can drive, he can play defense, and and like I know like back when we first started, you know, he was the little kid, the little tag along running around on our bench, and uh, I know he was in one of uh one of my best friends Antoine videos, like uh underdog, let's go, like so he and y'all put him in there, so he been a part of this too, like he actually uh actually seeing like a lot of the players to come through, the pro players, seeing how people uh, warm up, because he actually pay attention to that stuff. So, uh, yeah, as a dad, like, I like that he pick up a lot of stuff for me, but uh, it's like when he watching those other pro players and how they uh, prepare to play a game, and, and he, he take that stuff from them, and he do stuff, and I be like, man, I do that. I don't do stuff like that. Like, so... He picking it up from somewhere, so it's, it's like TBT was definitely part of that because it was he was very up close and personal with a lot of players, and he knew a lot of players. He he knew a lot of them too. I got I got two <laughs> final questions for you. The first one is, you know, 
Can you give me a few NBA players that you think play with the Jackson, Tennessee underdogs mentality where no matter who they're playing against, they're the best player on the court? Oh, talking about the player, the best player, the mentality, the players with the men with an underdog mentality. Man, I a lot of people don't like this player, but I love Patrick Beverly mentality. I love I love it because I, I just feel like him, Chris Paul. Uh, Rondo. Uh, I'm trying not to give too many flashy, obvious ones, but I, I like Ja a lot. Of course, one of our players got ties to him at Murray State. Um, uh, just, just, just the players that make winning plays: PJ Tucker, Jimmy Butler, like guys like that that just play to win. Like they can have ten points or twenty points, and and. The impact is still the same on the game. That's a great answer. My, my last question for you, and I asked Juwan the same thing. You know, if you could give a, a message to the world, a message to the people about Jackson, Tennessee underdogs, what would it be? Oh, a message about Jackson, Tennessee. Um, let me see. Rem like, remember, like, you going to, like, one thing about Jackson – like we we the little town outside of Memphis where like and I feel like like Jackson is a a mecca of basketball in Tennessee. Like you see our teams in state state tournaments every year. We got a lot of players to come out of here. Like yeah, Memphis. If you ask people, yeah, that's that's the mecca. But like outside of Memphis, you got Jackson. And, and we don't lay down and we don't bend over for nobody. Like, so, you know, we feel like we can match up with anybody. And this ain't just for the players that play for the underdogs. I'm, I'm talking about everybody out of Jackson, Tennessee, that play ball. Like, you know, they they deserve their respect, too. You know, I wish we can bring everybody that can play and people we respect to play with us, but it's just only so many spots that we can – can have, but them them players that's in Jackson, y'all definitely get their respect from us also. All right, well, Anthony Sampson, I appreciate you coming on. Excited for another underdogs run in TBT 2023, potentially. My guess is you guys will not be a 15 or a 16 seed. Uh yeah, that's that's a that's a great guess. I hope I hope they, you know, the committee learned the lesson. Like, if y'all want them teams to go far, like, get us away from them. <laughs> All right. Thanks, man. All right. All right. I'm here with Jawan Long from the Jackson, Tennessee underdogs. Definitely been underdogs many times in TBT, but I think it's safe to say they no longer are looked at as underdogs in TBT. Jawan, how we doing, man? I'm doing great. Just another day be alive, another day at work. That's good to hear. Before we jump into TBT stuff, what is work for you? What are you doing these days? Okay, so right now I'm a, a safety consultant, health and safety consultant. So uh, I consult for general contractors and construction and, uh, you know, I consult in general industry as well. Well, that's kind of a great transition into where we want to go with this with this interview and conversation. So you guys came onto the scene back in 2016 when you truly were the first real team to be a 16 seed to beat the one seed. I mean, I'll right. kind of let you take it from there. Just talk about the, the lead up to that game, you know, what you guys were thinking about who you were playing and then and then the mm -hmm. actual game. OK, so. You know, leading up to us, uh, the underdogs playing um, UK alumni, I was actually a grad assistant at my school at the time, Murray State. So I was a grad assistant there. And so obviously Murray State and UK, you know, we hear a lot about UK uh, going to Murray State and everything. So uh, some of my players, they, they, you know, we talked about the – basketball tournament and everything. Uh, they kind of looked and seen who was on my team, and they just heard, you know, UK alumni. And some of my players were like, man, y'all about to get killed and all that type of stuff. So, you know, that was – but my teammates and I, we've been playing together 
since middle school, high school, and you know, half of the team, and then the other half, you know, we we've been playing together for probably about four or five years. So uh we knew, you know, how good we were. And we also knew that everybody else did not know how good we were because we didn't have that big name. So, and that's kind of how the name came because we knew that we were going to be the underdogs in the tournament and that was okay with us. So, as far as once we got to the game, you know, 16C, 1C, all the hype was for UK. That's what we wanted, you know. Uh, we wanted to make some noise and we knew we had a great chance to win that game. So, in our eyes, we were not the underdog. Uh, we expected to win that game. So, um, and we knew we was going to probably surprise them at the start because they didn't know who we were. Uh, and that's what we did. So we surprised them, came out, you know, with a lot of intensity, hard defense, and uh, we got up pretty big on them. And they had to try to, uh, fight and claw their way back uh, at the end of the game, which did not work out for them. So at the end of the day, you know, we knew uh, we expected to win that game. We knew everybody else did not expect us to win and, uh, you know, end up working out in our favor. Absolutely. So, you know, you mentioned it was a UK alumni team, Kentucky alumni team. They had a bunch of pros. You right. know, for lack of a better explanation, you guys did not have a bunch of pros. Can exactly. you talk a little bit about the occupations that the players on your team had at the moment of TBT? Yeah, so at the moment of TBT that year, um, some of the occupations our players had, some of my teammates was, again, I was a grad assistant at the time for Murray State basketball. We had a couple of truck drivers, we had my brother, who's an insurance agent. Um, we had some high school coaches. So, you know, uh, some guys that work at the bank. So we had a little bit of everything, but no professional basketball players. It's, it's really crazy and really remarkable. When you hear, you know, UNBC say, we're the first 16 seed to beat a one seed. What, what do you think of that? Um, You know, I, I think it's, it was only a matter of time, to be honest with you, uh, especially around, you know, these times when at the time, you know, it got to a point to where everybody wasn't just trying to jump to the big schools all the time or the big schools wasn't as good as they are, are traditionally. So I kind of figured it was only a matter of time, you know, at some point it got to happen and, and uh, the UNBC team was the, a pretty good team. So so when you hear friends or family or it gets brought up during March Madness, say, hey, UNBC is the first team to be a 16 seed, to be a one seed, do you say, well, that's that's not actually entirely <laughs> true? Well, uh, I really don't think of it like that. Uh, you know, I do think of it as – I do believe that we gave a lot of people confidence and hope. I, I, I believe that with the, in the bottom of my heart, uh, because if you just see a 16 seed and one seed, a lot of teams might already be defeated. All right. Uh, and you see the big names that's on the teams and everything. So, um, but I, so I do think that we made it believable. And and you start seeing it in the TBT tournament a little more as well. So definitely, we saw it again similarly with you guys when mm -hmm. you were the first 15 seed to beat <laughs> uh, a two seed in TBT. I'm not sure exactly first in TBT, but you guys did it again. But this right. one was a little different because you you beat House of Pain in basically a road game because it was in Illinois. They had oh, some nice. fans. Yeah. So yeah. talk, talk about that game a little bit, man. That game was intense. It was, it was live. Like you said, it was really a road game. Like they had all their fans there. Um, and, and we were very hyped for that game. Cause I'm going to remind you a little bit of, of 
before that is in 2020, during the COVID year, the year before that, we made it to the Sweet 16. And um, we were supposed to be in that 2014 bubble, but, you know, I ended up catching COVID. The whole team got disqualified for it. And that's when House of Pain made their noise. So uh, we felt like we, we had a big chip on our shoulder. It was like, look, that all the noise and attention they are getting right now, we kind of felt like we were supposed to be getting. So we and we always have a chip on our shoulder anyway. That just made the chip a little bigger. And again, I don't know if House of Pain knew who we were, um, but we knew who we were. We knew uh, how good we are. We knew we wasn't a 15 seed. So anytime we get one of those, you know, really low, or I guess you can say high seeds, however you want to look at it, we feel a certain way about it. If we're not a one seed, we're going to feel a certain way about it. So, <laughs> Absolutely. It makes a ton of sense. So, you know, we probably should have started with this at the beginning, but I was so excited to talk about the 16 verse one upset. Can you talk a little bit about how Jackson, Tennessee underdogs was formed, where the guys come from? You know, I know rival high schools and stuff like right. that, but, but for the listeners out there, could you kind of bring it all together? Okay. So the underdogs, Jackson, Tennessee underdogs were formed pretty much, you know, uh, once we, once my core group got out of college, we started playing a lot of men's tournaments. So my core group was probably about, six of the guys and we all went to the same high school. We won two state championships together. My senior year, we were ranked in the country uh, with kind of like the same situation as the underdogs. We didn't have any big names in my high school and we were ranked. I think we ended up 13th in the country uh, for my high school and we played the national schedule my, my senior year. Um, so we end up this. I mean, we, we still best friends. So, and then some of the other guys, we played against them or we watched them play growing up. So once we got out of college, we started playing in tournaments for money and for like $5,000, $10,000. And we played some really good competition. NBA players. We always competed whether we won or lost. We won sometimes, we lost sometimes. But we always was right there in the game. Never got blew out by anybody or anything like that. So uh, we knew how good we were. Um, but we also knew that every tournament we went to, we were the underdog. So uh, how we learned about the TBT tournament is – um, an ad or a tweet from the, the basketball tournament. I think it was a million dollars at the time. And I kind of joked with my group of guys like, man, do y'all want to play in this tournament? Didn't even think that they would take me serious. Uh, we didn't know how to get in the tournament or anything like that. And then they, everybody took me serious. Like, yeah, we need to get in that tournament. So that's how, that's how it started. That's awesome. Um, I, I would love to hear a little bit about the players on the team because, you know, I want to hear about your teammates, who you like playing with, but then just why, why you guys are good, why it works, okay. why, why non pros, your team of non pros can not only compete with Kentucky alumni pros, but beat them. Right. Okay. So I'll start with my high school teammates. So we have Anthony Sampson, who's, Five three. We have my twin brother Antoine alone. He's about five eleven, six feet. We have uh, we had my other high school teammate six six Joshua Sane, uh, Terry Johnson six six. Um, trying to think of Devon Jones played on that team at the time, but he was six six as well. So. so those are my high school teammates. And again, we all we were ranked in the nation my senior year. Uh, and then um we played against Jeremy Weddle in high school. He went to a rival school in Jackson, Tennessee, South Side. We played against him, one of the best guys that came out of Jackson, Tennessee. 
Uh, Chris Cole, 6'4", just monster truck type of dude, but very skilled down low. So, and he played before us. So we watched him playing in high school growing up. So, and then I think we picked up one or two other people, but uh, I, I hope I'm not leaving out anybody important. But uh, those were our kind of core guys that we played with before the TBT tournament. So uh, we already had great chemistry. So, uh, you know, uh, one thing about us is we think we're going to win on the defensive end every game. So as soon as you see us play, we tell everybody, get up full court. Lil Anthony, he's a net, right? So – if Anthony is picking them up at half court, then Anthony should not be in the game. We and that's how we hold each other account. We talk to each other like that. Like if you can't pick them up full court, then you need to come out. And the fact that we can all talk to each other like that and hold each other accountable, but and we can take that type of talk as well if somebody's coming at me like that. I think that's what makes us so good because we don't care. We have one goal. We're not trying to score 40 points, uh, per, like one individual player or anything like that. We want to stop our opponents from scoring, and uh, we want to play hard. And that, those two goals, what three? Let's communicate, uh, defense, uh, the whole game, all you got, and then let's play harder than the other team. And I think those three things is a recipe for great success. I love it. Before before I let you go, if you could add one more thing, anything you want, you know, the world, let's say, to know about Jackson, Tennessee underdogs, the story, anything, what would it be? To be honest with you, uh, now that we have been in the if, – if I – let me start that over. If I wanted the world to know one thing – that they don't already know about the Jackson, Tennessee underdogs is, yes, we've made noise, but we are not nowhere near done yet. We haven't won anything. We feel like we haven't won anything. We made some noise, but we're nowhere near done. And a championship and a big check will come to Jackson from a TBT tournament. I love it, Juwan Long. This has been great. Best of luck to you the rest of your year in your real person job. And then best of luck to you this summer again, hopefully in TBT. And we'll we'll talk soon. I appreciate it. Clocking out early, that's the dish I don't like. Been getting paid since I was riding on the bike. Hit the pedal with the eighth, hopping on the ninth flight. I've been chilling out of sight. I'll be at the bar tonight. Told the bartender, go and take my car to swipe. You try the same thing. But your car get declined White rappers nowadays No, we're not too hard to find I'm so dapper with my ways I'm gonna linger in your mind Always told me good things Look, I'm too dull to our patient But I've been way too patient Riding bars in my basement I'm anxious in the real world It's time for me to say this The basics, the talent in my mind I can't waste it My life is too safe It's my time for it's taking I'm baking my mind Every day it's the same ish Lazy, my grind needs to get a new facelift from the underground and busting through the pavement Rock with it and lean with it My team win it, my team win it Now rock with it and lean with it My team turn up when I spit it Now rock with it and lean with it My team win it, my team win it Now rock with it and lean with it My team turn up when I spit it Don't think that I'm playing because I'm saving the game And I said that I will be more Cause oh yeah, that is so raving, racing and pacing around all these lames in my lane, out my way, unless you're trying to pay me. Not from the playpen, it's coming from the jungle. When you hear the bell, you better be ready to rumble. Because I'ma grab the gloves and I'm gonna flex my muscles. Go ahead and spit some bars, but you're probably just gonna mumble. A lot of rappers these days really need to get them humble. Cause they think they at the top, they better stop before they stumble. Cause I'm swiping all their biddies while they swiping right up bumble. And your girl, calls me daddy, but she home you uncle but no we not related homie no we not some fam you never get in clubs you can't even get in stands you never get in dubs like the browns from the land when push comes to shove wave that towel in your hand rock with it and lean with it my team win it my team
my team.